kill my dog. He have no remorse. Basically, our toy poodle Rosie that we had, beloved Rosie that we have eight years, was killed. She was placed on our front porch by my husband. This was on a typical Sunday. I was cooking dinner. My husband was resting. My daughter, Tierra, was studying. She's a nursing student. Again, Rosie was placed on the porch to have dinner, ch chained up on a leash, and the defendant, Kevin Thompson, two big German shepherds, attacked Rosie and killed her. And our lives has been shattered. And here's a picture of Rosie. Got it. And basically, she was killed. And again, we have to live with this the rest of our lives, and we cannot get over this. It's been a big tragedy for the whole family. How did you find out what had happened? Tierra is the witness. She actually, Kevin knocked at the door, and Tierra can tell you what happened okay. from there. Tierra? Hello, Your Honor. Basically, yes. what happened was I was in the loft studying. I heard a knock on the door. I proceeded to go downstairs. I opened the door, and then the defendant proceeds to tell me that he thinks his dogs got a loose from the garage, and he thinks that they bit her and that she's possibly dead. It wasn't no doubt in mind that our dog was dead. I proceeded to look the left side of me on the porch and I seen my dog laid on her side. She was stone cold, her eyes were bulging, her tongue was hanging out of her mouth and she was dead. You can tell she'd been there for a long period of time. And when he came to my porch, he had no signs of remorse or any type of sympathy towards the situation. He didn't even have the dogs with him. He ran back home, put his dogs up, and made up all these lies about what happened with the situation. And that's when I proceeded to go inside the house and I was crying frantically and I told my mom and dad what happened and that's when they ran downstairs and came outside. Kevin, why don't you tell me your, your side of the story here? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I had uh, my two dogs, that's in question, which is Exhibit B, and one of them, the brown one, as you can see, is not a German Shepherd. That is Leah. She is uh, eight years old. And then the other one is Boomer, which is he just turned one earlier this week, is a German Shepherd. They were in the house in the yes. kitchen. I, did, I had my other German Shepherd, which is older. I took him out for a walk. I was coming back, opened up the garage. I get to the door to enter my house. I hit the button to close the garage, put Max in, then... Boomer and Leah, they come out, they run out. They, I, I closed the door, closed Max in, went around to the side of my house. So, so now we're in this game. So they're there, they run to my neighbor's yard, which is not fenced in. So they're there, I get close to them, they run over here, I get close to this one, they run. So I turn around and walk back and they come, I run. So we're playing this game back and forth. Then they get on the other side of my neighbor's yard, close to the other neighbor, and his yard is fenced in. So we're still over there going back and forth trying to get this one so it's like a game for them. Then they both ran around the front of the house and that house is directly across the street from the Green's house. They dart out behind me. I turn around, I see that they did run up on the Green porch. porch. They was up there for maybe one or two seconds. I'm yelling, they come down, I grab them by the collar, I take them, I take them to the house, I come back, I go over to the Green's house, I knock on the door, and I go, and I go, and I, I rub their dog on their ribs. He's not moving, okay? Finally, as she said, she comes down and said, hey, my dogs came with your porch, possibly did this. She yelled, uh, Mr. Green, he comes out, he's upset, yelling, saying, hey, why did you, and I kind of explained to him what happened. He said, why did your dogs come directly? I said, no, they went around back, it was planned, they came over. I didn't see exactly what happened, but I'll take responsibility for what happened. I'll take full responsibility. The dog was named after my mom that's deceased, and it was, I've been so bad distressed over the matter. I left town for three or four days after that to Houston. I had to go to the emergency room. You know, it's just, he killed my dog, I killed. Yeah, yeah, and oh, a piece judge, can I of me, my heart. Okay. Is, Broken judge, Jerry, he killed my dog. He have no remorse. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the dog was named after my mom's just deceased. And he knew my dog was on the porch chained <clears throat> up. He had no remorse. Dog. Now you have said that for about 20 minutes or an extended period of time, you were chasing after them. I admit the dogs probably thought they were playing.
But, you know, dogs are animals, so they don't know. But you, for 20 minutes, didn't have those dogs under control, and they have suffered several things. They have sued because of the cost of cremating the dog. They have sued because there are expenses in terms of the memorial center. They have sued because of the vet bills. And those three items, which are measurable, there's empirical evidence what that cost, $690 for the cremation, $159 for the memorial center, $75 on the vet bill, so that gets to be $924, and now I'm left with making a decision on the emotional distress. Now, people who watch our court will know that I very rarely give a judgment for emotional distress because lawsuits, by definition, are emotional, and someone is distressed, otherwise they wouldn't bring the lawsuit. So I would be giving an award for emotional distress every single day. Usually I don't. However, I reached these conclusions. It's almost beyond coincidence. Your two dogs, playful, playing, not, maybe not real, obviously not realizing what they're doing, but they wind up killing their dog. And the loss of a dog, one you've had for what, eight years, it's part of the family, that emotional distress, anyone who owns a pet, you would have the same emotional distress if it was your dog that was killed. So I am saying, in this case, I am going to give an award for emotional distress because there is no doubt in my mind that great harm was done. You didn't do it on purpose, but there is negligence. And so I'm adding $1,000 to that, and I'm ruling in favor of the plaintiff $1,924. Thank you and good luck to all of you. I'm sorry you all went through this. Thanks for watching. Now please approach the bench. The way I look at it, you have two options here. Option A, watch more Judge Jerry. Option B, watch more Jerry Springer. The choice is yours. Now get out of my courtroom. You have more clips to watch. And don't forget to subscribe.